Well, I think approaching any patient with a headache, the key thing is to get a good headache history. And a headache history is really structured around three main themes. The first of which is the pattern and the timing of the headaches. And that's particularly when the headaches are worse in the day, how often they happen, how long they last. And then a description of the actual headache itself. Where is the pain felt? Can the patient describe the type of pain? And very importantly for this particular theme, um, are there any associated features with the headache? Are there any other symptoms that come on at the same time as the headache? And then finally, the third um, thing you need to focus on are things in the background history of the patient that may provide an explanation as to why the patient is getting these headaches or not. Well, I think, uh, firstly, by virtue of the fact that these headaches are caused by an underlying structural lesion, a brain tumour, these headaches are classified as secondary types of headaches. And this distinguishes them from primary headaches, which are the more common ones that GPs will see. And primary headaches are things like tension headache and migraine. The International Headache Society has a very extensive classification of headaches, and they describe two particular types of headache associated with brain tumours. The first of which are headaches caused directly by the tumour itself, and the second of which um, are headaches caused by raised intracranial pressure as a complication of the underlying tumour. The headaches caused by the tumour itself um, can be localised to begin with, but tend to become progressively more severe as the tumour develops. They're sometimes described as being worse in the morning and maybe worse on bending, coughing and straining. And an important part of the classification is that the headaches tend to get better once the tumour is operated on and removed, or at least reduced in size. The second type of headache contained in the classification are the headaches um, associated with raised intracranial pressure caused by the underlying tumour. And these are probably uh, the type of headaches that most doctors are more familiar with as being associated with brain tumours. They tend to be more generalised in nature, uh, they tend to be intermittent to begin with, but perhaps get progressively worse as the size of the tumour increases. They may be worse in the morning and may be associated with nausea and vomiting. And again, these headaches often improve following surgery to reduce the volume of the tumour or to remove it completely. Of course, tumours are not the only causes of headaches associated with raised intracranial pressure, and there are other conditions you need to think about. For example, venous sinus thrombosis can present with a very similar type of headache and may even be associated with papilledema. You should also think about idiopathic intracranial hypertension, particularly in young women who are perhaps overweight. And a third condition to think about are headaches associated with obstructive sleep apnea, and these headaches have many of the features of headaches of raised intracranial pressure. Various studies have looked at the types of headaches that patients who are subsequently diagnosed as having brain tumours present with, and unfortunately it's not quite as clear-cut as the classification might suggest. The timing of pattern of the headache can be very helpful in terms of suggesting an underlying tumour. The most common presentation is for headaches to present insidiously and gradually increase in time. They're normally intermittent to begin with and progressively become more severe and more intense in nature and can even progress to become continuous. Very occasionally, patients present with a sudden onset headache and this can represent an acute event such as a bleed into an underlying tumour. One of the main difficulties is that the headaches people describe can be fairly non-specific in nature. 75% of people describe a feeling of pressure inside their head. 66% of people describe a dull, generalised ache. But interestingly, 40% of people describe a much sharper shooting pain, which could be more like a migrainous type of headache. In terms of the associated features that go with the headache, um, the classifications mention nausea and vomiting, but that's only really described in 20 to 60% of patients and is much more common in children presenting with headaches associated with brain tumours, particularly tumours in the posterior fossa causing obstructive hydrocephalus. 
And in terms of positional nature to the headaches, the classifications mention headaches being worse on bending, coughing or straining. This is only really reported by up to 25% of people, so not as common as you might think. Any history of either cancer or known HIV should ring alarm bells as a potential warning of an underlying serious neurological cause for the headaches. Equally, patients who are over 50 who are presenting with new or changed headaches should again ring alarm bells and you should investigate this further. It's true that the headaches themselves may not be that specific and the differential diagnosis is fairly wide, including the much more common headaches of tension headaches and migraines. But through your headache history, if you've discovered positive features suggestive of raised intracranial pressure, then that's clearly a cause for concern. I think the important message to take home, though, is that even if patients' headaches don't fit the descriptions in the classification, it doesn't mean that they do not have an underlying tumour. Where a patient presents with such a non-specific headache, but you are concerned about a tumour, you need to think about the concept of headache plus, and the pluses are other associated features that should ring some alarm bells. For example, headaches plus focal neurological symptoms. For example, any weakness or numbness, or maybe even speech disturbance. Um, or headaches plus non-focal neurological symptoms. And examples of that would be changes in memory or changes in personality. The difficulty there is that the patient themselves may not be aware of this, and you may need to get extra history from the patient's relatives or carers. Other associated features can be headaches associated with visual disturbance headaches associated with pulsatile tinnitus, or headaches that are worse on bending, coughing or straining. Firstly, I'd like to emphasise the importance of a good, detailed headache history, particularly focusing on the timing and pattern of the headache, the nature of the headache itself, and very importantly, any associated features with the headache. Secondly, if a patient presents with a headache that's a classical headache of raised intracranial pressure, this is clearly a cause for concern and should lead you to go on and examine the patient's fundi. Thirdly, patients may present with a less specific type of headache, but if through your headache history you've identified features of headache plus, and those pluses being either focal or non-focal neurological symptoms, this should lead you on to examine the patient neurologically, including examination of their visual fields and their fundi.